Welcome to the Hortons Books channel. We're here at the Royal Automobile Club Pall Mall, where it is the Motoring Book of the Year Awards 2023. I'm here with my daughter Shelby, and after the awards, we will be interviewing all the winners of each award. with Andy Saunders who's just won the debut author award and from where I was I was sat at the front watching you you seemed absolutely blown away that you'd, <laughs> you'd won the award but what were your emotions doing during that? well um, this week has been a roller coaster anyway um, in, in the last chapter of the book I say that on I've, I've worked run a garage for 41 years and I'm disillusioned this was written two years ago yeah Yesterday was my day of retirement, so today is my first day of, of being free, and I've come here and I've won that award, which is just like outstanding. Um, I'm so proud because when I was at school, I never wanted to be at school. I didn't want to be at school when, when I went to my infant school. I certainly didn't want to be there at 16. Yeah. Um, I started work with my dad when I was 10, um, and in summer holidays and weekends I would work with him, and that's all I wanted to do. And I was ungraded in secondary modern um, education in English because there was so much homework which I never done. And they always said I was good at writing essays and yeah. such like, and I just didn't do them because I was working on cars. And this is like the combination of all of that. It, it proves you don't need you don't need much at all other than passion. If you've got well, passion, it doesn't really matter where you are. And the one thing we loved about this book is that it exudes passion. That's, I mean, it's, it's exactly what it's about. Yeah, it's that, that's what a couple of the uh, people that have said that have done, because um, it, it got in Octane magazine, Mark Dixon um, said that it was Star of Book of the Month. Yeah. And he said it just, uh, I'm not serious. Which I, well, what's the point of being serious? We're, we're going to be dead at some point in our life, so we just want to enjoy it while we're here. Um, that's my life, just get on and enjoy it and, and, and do what you can. And this is just winning this tonight in, in such a place as the RAC and Pell Mow is, 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 you can't get it better really. Well, it, you've thoroughly deserved it and I have to say we, we should probably do um, a full episode on you alone because I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued too. by 
your story. <laughs> oh, really? And, and just, I mean, looking through this book, some of the projects you, yeah. you've worked and on. And everything in here is bare time, because yeah. the, the everyday business was MOTs and, and servicing. Um, that, was, that was eight to five every day of the week. So everything in there has been built in weekends and evenings. Now I'm retired. I've got like five cars lined up already. I've got projects coming out in years because yeah. I knew this day was coming. And when the thing is now with all this nonsense on the um, internet of like classic cars and projects and what's rare and what's not, if, if it comes up and it's gone, it's never going to come up again. And mainly when it's something rare like um, Tetanus Cord or this one here, Deja, when it's something rare, then I build it around what I've been given. But I've got, I've got a couple of projects lined up which are just going to be so super cool and, and they're not projects as in a pile of old bits, they're, they're kind of there but they yeah. just need like that little bit of tweaking, more, more than full customization, just like making them look better than what they used to. Because I can do restoration, now, restoration doesn't excite me like customising because you're basically, however big the project is, you're still making it look like what it was. So although that might be an awful lot of work, um, and I'm not knocking that because I've done it, it's, it's, the creation isn't there. When you're actually going, I made this um, out of nothing, that's, that's creation. And it's, it's, it's like art to me. Uh, it's precisely but you're welcome to come down, or I can come up, or whatever. Well, no, I mean, we, we could if chat all evening. To, I think so, yeah. We should definitely do an episode on you, because you really... When, from when I, I didn't know you prior to this book no, coming out. No, we, we, I think I bought a couple of books off you in the past, but I've never stopped no. to speak to you, no. So it, it's a fascinating story, and uh, yeah, you should really buy this book because it won't be around for long. It's been hugely successful. It's uh, uh, the most wonderfully produced book, and congratulations. And Watson, um, Jean and Glyn, and Jody, the layout artist. Yeah. What a star she is! Well, um, they are a great team. Just fabulous. Yeah, they're they're small. They're professional. They're extremely good. They don't. There's no nonsense. It's just like you do it this way, or, or you know, this is what we suggest. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. We'll so definitely much. come and visit you and thank uh, you and do an episode just like I'd, I'd enjoy that. All right. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank you, Ben. I'm here with John Presnell, the author of Kim, which won the motoring book price more than £50. This is becoming a habit for you. In 2021, you were the author of the Lamborghini Mura book, which won book of the year that year. 2022, you won with uh, Marcel Porto. What's your secret? Uh, choosing subjects which are fun and enjoyable to tackle. Um, all those, those three books are all very different. One's a biography, one's a company history, one's a history of a particular car. But in each of those, there's a lovely backstory of people and how they created either a company or a car. Uh, the human element's very important for me. And so this, um, having spoken to you last year when you were under time constraints, uh, was a daunting project in itself because it's such an important project. Yes, it, 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 well, it had to make, meet what I regard as the generally accepted centenary year for MG, yeah. although that's a debatable point. Uh, what takes time, and I shouldn't be telling you this, but what takes time is not the writing of the book, it's the research, talking to people, visiting sources of uh, photographic images, fact checking. The actual process of writing, for some people it's an agony. It's the pulling teeth thing. But for me, actually the writing I don't find difficult yeah. or, or particularly time consuming. That said, I love words, yeah. which, is, which is a big help. Yeah. If you love words, you love cars, and you love images, all those things go into the pot and help, I hope, make a book that people want to read. Because if people don't want to read the book, I want people to pick up a book and say, I want to read this, and I want to come back to it and look more. Books are expensive things, and they need to be a pleasure for people. Well, you say they're expensive, but considering the size and the quality of 
of printing is 115 pounds. Um, in, in today's market, I think it's quite reasonably priced. I think if you want a 40 pound book, you'll get a 40 pound book. And you'll get, we could have done that book for 40 pounds and it would have been printed on not very good paper. It wouldn't have had any design involved at all, and it would have had a gallery or two galleries of photographs in the middle. And you'd read it in your armchair and put it away, and that would be it, gone. Whereas if you spend more money on a book, you're actually giving people something that is a genuine pleasure to handle and to read and to look at. And those things are more and more important book publishing has moved up in price but it's upped its game in terms of the quality of books that are available to people. Not everyone well, will accept that. And a lot of that is because papers quadrupled in price and, and such other criteria yes. as that. Yes. So this is another success for you. What is your next project? Well I, I don't want to give away too many secrets but um, I'm working on I'm actually reviving a project that I started on in the, at the end of the 1990s when I started interviewing all the people involved with a major British company and um, talking about their production cars, their experimental cars, their prototypes. It's a technical history of this particular company's post-war products from the engineering and design perspective. So it's something completely different from the last three books. But probably equally as uh, in-depth research. An awful and, lot of interviews. Yeah, and extremely uh, interesting. Um, well, congratulations once again. Thank you, Ben. And we will expect to see you here next year. Quite I'm possibly. Sure. Thank you very much, Thank ben. you. So I'm here with Robert Weber, who is from Sportfire of Verlag, and he was the winner of the Motorsport Book of the Year, above £50, with uh, Bentley Speed 8. Robert, you've been nominated for many awards over the last few years, and finally you've come away with something. You must be very happy. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> it's um, definitely an honour to be awarded um, by the Royal Automobile Club and especially with this book because I think it's a nice frame that a car that was built out of a German-British corporation and that won Le Mans 20 years ago <clears throat> and so we have now done a book also in a British and German corporation by a British author and a German publishing house that is now awarded um, here at the Royal Automobile Club I think it's a nice frame so did the author come to you or did you search out the author and... Well, it was initiated um, by the owner of um, a car or some of the cars and he brought the author to me and initiated the project yep. um, to be able to collect all the information and to write down the full story of the Bentley Speed 8 as long as it is possible and to get all the original information from the designers, from the mechanics, from everyone involved in, in, this, in this project. And, and as always with all your products, whether they be the Automobile Sport magazine or your books, beautifully produced. Thank you beautifully produced slipcase, everything is of the highest quality. And even when you started first producing books, what, 20 something years ago, I think, when I first had your original books, uh, and I met you at Essen, mm -hmm. Techno Classic at Essen, um, the quality outshone and, and nothing has changed. And I have to say, I'm so pleased as, a, as a com your company that you've achieved this award after many tries. Um, you've been here many years. And uh, but th this truly was uh, a move beyond all the, uh, just the, how complete it is. And it, was, it, was, it was deserving of the award that you won. So. Thank you very much. And 
the magazine. So the magazine is but is going from strength to strength. The automobile score. Well, we are working on that regularly and um, with a lot of energy, definitely. Yeah. And it's how so you have more and more subscribers year on year. Absolutely, or? yeah. We're also trying to entering new markets uh, like the US, for example, and yeah. uh, abroad, which also takes more energy from us because we are very small teams. We are working with uh, four people full time, which is. I would say not many people to, to, to publish a quarterly magazine in two languages and also books at the same time. And when we started, I said we will not be able to do more than one book per year. And at the moment we are doing four per year yeah. plus a magazine and that on a high quality level that we want to, to, to stay on or even to improve. Um, I think that's um, yeah quite something for such a small team. And uh, what, what I'm very grateful for to, to have this team. To well, be exactly. Able to do that. And uh, both of our companies have worked close together over the years. Absolutely. We yeah. were at uh, recently at Porsche Rennes Sport. Yeah. We had uh, Norbert Singer signing, yeah. where we sold over 50 copies of his book in about half an hour, which yeah. was incredible. Yeah. Um, we look forward to working with you in the future. So do and I. we look forward to maybe you winning more prizes here. I will give everything. Well, Excuse thank me. you. Congratulations. Thank you really you, deserve it. Thank and you. we'll see you in the future. Thank you. I'm here with Crispian Beasley, who won the overall award of best uh, book of the year. Um, were you surprised? Was it, you know, did you think you had a chance? I honestly didn't then. I mean, I've been to the ROC obviously a million times. I've never been to the Book Awards. I know how prestigious they are. Uh, so A to come was fantastic. B to be nominated was extraordinary. And to win, in answer to your question, was is wonderful and, and completely unexpected. Yeah, well it's, you know, as one of the judges, we all agreed that, I mean, just how this book has sold this year has been incredible. It has literally flown off the shelves, um, which in the modern environment is, is fairly rare, I have to say. Uh, you know, having done this for 30 years, we used to take 20 or 30 copies of any book and we would sell out. But yours, literally, it, I mean, it's it sold and it's sold and it's sold. It's just been unreal. Well, well long, long may it continue. Um, um, you know, w one of the things I love about the book the expression is the book sells by its cover but who produced the artwork for the cover because i think it's inspired uh, interesting question uh my sons who are both here today uh, helped we, we all came up with ideas yeah. uh, there were various ideas of uh, a racing driver or a racing car driving up to Wilmington scrubs for example or a racing driver an image of a racing driver with a ball and chain these sort of things um and they were all amalgamated, but actually this was done, and I'm afraid I can't remember the name of the artist, but he's a great Italian artist, and Mark Hughes, who is the editor at um, Evro, Eric Gordon Rose, yeah. uh, editor, pumped, you know, so we, we all collated ideas, and that's what came out. Um, so I, I would love to say it was me who designed it. it well, I'm not an artist, it wasn't, but it, but it, it that was the best of, and then we finessed that, and I, and I was responsible for finessing it. But, yeah. um, but I can't take as much credit for that, honestly, Mark Hughes and the artist. But for me, the whole, so not only the cover design, the content, obviously, but just the size and the ease of, that it sits in your hand, the fact that it doesn't have a dust wrapper, it all adds to what is, I think, a, a hugely successful but, product. So. That's really kind of you to say, sir. I mean, it, it is, it's a heavy book, so, uh, you know, once you finish reading it, you can use it as a doorstop. It, it really is that heavy. Um, I, I was going back to the cover. I was slightly nervous that it may be uh, marginalised. It may maybe made it look too, uh, you know, too not serious enough. Um, was my concern, but it has gone down very well, as you say. Um, and I can't remember the last one of the question was, but. Anyway. Um, 
Um, so volume yeah. two is, is not imminent, but volume two will come. Yeah. And, and as you said um, on the stage earlier, there will be a chapter on Bernie Eccleston, well, but who um, recently was um, convicted of a, of a crime. Yeah, so there will be a full chapter on Bernie Eccleston, which there was in, in volume two, which there wasn't in, in the volume one you're holding. Um, but there are many, many more. You'd be surprised how many there are. Um, can I get another? I think that's about 180,000 words ish. Can I get another 180,000 words down? Probably not, but it'll be well over 100,000, and there'll be some very well known ones. And hugely in interesting. Hugely interesting, I hope, but it won't be, you know, this has still got a lot of momentum. Yeah. You know, the fact that Hortons is still selling it um, and it's selling quite well in the States as well. There's yeah. quite a lot of US content in it. Um, so, and, and also, I need time. You know, I have, I have other things in my life as well. Um, so, I need time to put it together. But there will be. There will be another edition, for sure. It's been a real pleasure during this year to see you at different events all over the place. And the book's been flying off the shelf. And uh, congratulations. Thanks, man. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here when Volume 2 comes yeah, out. I look forward to it. Thank you very Thanks. much indeed. So I'm here with Rachel Harris Gardner, and she won the motorsport book sub 50 pound category and the first woman to ever win an award at, at this award event. How do you feel about that? Well, I didn't know that I was the first woman and it, it, it is an honor. It's, it's, it's like, it's not quite being an answer to a trivial pursuit question, but it's, you know what I mean? Um, it's just a little bit sad that it's taken this long. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the 10th year. Yeah. And uh, so what is your, um, background in motorsport and, and where you're, you know, where you fit into beginning to write this book. Um, I started writing the book a long time ago. Um, it's sort of the first ideas for it were um, it started my blog Speed Queens, which has um, existed in various forms since about 2004, um, and it's moved to a few different homes. And it, it, it's it's not obviously not the same as the book. It's more just profiles of women drivers that I've collected over the years and I thought I really do need to do something more with this I mean it gets a healthy number of clicks and I enjoy doing it but I like the idea of putting it together in a more thematic um, narrative sort of way and uh, telling some of the stories that don't quite fit in a driver profile as well yeah and there have been some of the most incredible drivers have been female drivers during the era of motorsport and still you know still even now i mean i guess now women have more of an opportunity to to perform at, a, at an even level with men you'd think that you'd think that there'd be steadily more and more but it's they, it goes in peaks and troughs and um, with it's, it's partly due to economics and fashion and the, the way that social social mores swing backwards and forwards to do with relations between men and women and it, it is, in, in some ways, it's a numbers game in that some in some periods, like the 1930s, motorsport was more popular, yeah, and perhaps slightly more affordable, and the number was of you know, overall racing drivers was bigger, so you had a lot more women, so there, were, there was a bigger pool of female talent to come to the top, um, and then the 90s sort of rallying there were quite a few, and um, quite a few girls coming through junior single seaters. Um, they don't. They seem to have bumped their heads on the glass ceiling a bit, and I, I think that's due to um, really strict super license rules. There's a really standardised path, and historically women haven't taken that path. They've fat dominated. Yeah, yeah. Well, Danica Patrick was did incredibly well during her career. She, she did, yeah. And I got to meet her on one occasion, and she. Um, told me off for being in the pit lane so that's <laughs> an interesting story about that so have you got any other projects on the go yeah um, I mean, I'm a working journalist as well so I've, I've always got projects on I've been writing a book about aviation for the first yeah. time so it's a bit new but I've started working on a second book which um, so Michael Barton's written his book biography of Dorothy Levitt and uh, my mine started off as a straight biography but it's going off in different directions now, and there's other women who, and it's, it's interesting that Crispian has 
won the, the, the main award for a book about criminals because some of the other women, a lot of them weren't who they claimed to be, like Dorothy Levitt was not who she claimed to be, and a couple of the others I'm looking into, like uh, Mrs. A.C. Lace, um, was actually a criminal herself. Hmm. So it's gone in that kind of direction. I'm not, it's, I think it's going to be called Dorothy Levitt and Other Stories. It sounds really intriguing. Well, this Mrs. A.C. Lace was, um, she did race at Brooklyn, she was quite a good rally driver. Uh, she was a career criminal, she just stole money off people constantly. <laughs> well, we look forward to that. Congratulations once again. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you back here another year, hopefully. Yeah, if I ever get to Dorothy and other stories finished. <laughs> sounds good. Thank you. Cheers. So I'm here with uh, Tom Purvis, who prior to Ben Cousins was the chairman of the Royal Automobile Club and prior to that had a very simple job of being managing director of Rolls-Royce. Um, I really enjoyed your time here as chairman, but you're, you're still very active within, within the club here. Well, I'm a vice president of the club, which is a, a very sort of honourable position to have, I guess. I'm very lucky. Um, the club has been an important part of my life. I joined in the 80s. Uh, my boss in those days told me, you have to join the club, Tom. And uh, he reassured me that the club was sort of on the up rather than on the down, and, and he was right, and I never forgot. I was delighted to become a member. And then when I retired, I ended up being asked to join the board, which I did, and then become the chairman. And so you enjoyed your time here as the chairman? Yeah, absolutely. No, I did. I really didn't have... I found it absolutely fascinating. The, the, the culture of the members was fascinating. I mean, you've got the bridge players, you've got the chess players, you've got... Uh, squash players, you've got the dedicated motoring enthusiasts. Even a scuba got, diving club. Got, so yes, exactly. And they're all very engaged and enjoying the benefits of the uh, assets that the founding members gave us. I mean, so, this is one of the only clubs in London that was built as a clubhouse yeah. for, the, for its origin, the Royal Oswald Club. Well, and you can tell by the, the fact that it has the pool and the squash exactly. courts. Exactly, and, and they wanted to else. outdo the ACF in Paris. Yeah. Which, they which did. was the founding motor club, yeah. which they did. Yeah. And so during your tenure, the motoring book wards commenced yeah. during that time. Yeah. And I mean, it's incredible this evening, there's 150 people yeah. turning up. Good turnout, yes. And you yourself, a huge motoring book fan, and been a good customer <laughs> for many years. Well, my dear wife tells me that I'm not allowed to have any more big, heavy books because. Where are they going to go? You know, and she's not wrong in that sense. But I've always enjoyed uh, the automobile, the history of the automobile, motorsport, and its depiction in literature. And there's some wonderful books over the years that uh, do great credit to it. And I suppose the combination of the two things naturally come together. Exactly. And obviously here there's a, a huge library at the RAC. Yeah. And talking to other institutions and other clubs, how important do you see the RAC library as well, an integral part of the club? Well, it is a very important part of the club, but a lot of other clubs have a library, which is, in a sense, a general purpose library. It has uh, fiction, it has reference, and so on, and that's important for their purposes. But, you know, if you're the Travellers Club, you'd expect to find books about geography and about uh, if you're uh, the Royal Automobile Club, you would expect to find ultimately books, and we have them, and we have a history of it. And when I, I was yeah. chairman, I was very keen to encourage that because I thought, well, you can have any, you can go anywhere and buy a, a modern novel, you can go anywhere and get a reference book, but actually, we are the Royal Automobile Club, and this is a specialist field field that we should be concentrating on. And we've done that, but I think it is a leading library in automobile. I mean, I don't know another library um, in the United Kingdom uh, that is as, uh, as substantial as this one is in the automobile field. And I know Gaiden, and I know Bewley, and, and so on, all of which are excellent, but this is special. Well, also, the, the atmosphere is special. Well, the setting is... Yeah. is unique and it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, 
We'd like in the future to maybe do an episode on your uh, exploits with Rolls-Royce and BMW prior to that. Um, it's been a pleasure to chat to you and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much.